Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to our final panel. This is panel three. Um, and we're going to start um, with Adi Basola Ramsey, who has um, managed to fight back against virgin internet connections to join us. So we're very pleased that she's been able to do that. Um, and she's going to be starting us off and then we'll move on to Elizabeth Blaney after that. Um, and so do you have a, a PowerPoint that you'd like to share? Or are you happy just to speak? Right, great. I'll, I'll just speak. Thank you. Hello, hi everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me um, to today's um, discussion workshop around housing, seeing housing as a feminist issue. Um, yes, I'm sorry that I couldn't join you right from the beginning, as um, Kirsten mentioned earlier on, I've had various issues with Virgin Media today. Um, and so if I cut out, I apologise. And so that's affected my preparation today as well. Um, so I'll just get off started. Um, essentially, what I'm here to do is just to have um, an informal conversation with you all, um, or prompting of um, a, an approach to thinking. And um, I'm really grateful for the presentations that I was able to catch from um, Kashfi and uh, Loa from Ubuntu Women's Shelter and also from Kirsten Patton. Um, mine's is not going to be anywhere near as thorough and detailed as that. And so um, what I'm here to talk about today is race, racism, racial capitalism as ideologies and activities that govern and shape the world around us today. And so what I have personally been involved in is to improve my understanding of where I, where I am, the context of where I am um, in time and history and space. Um, how did we get to where we are? How did we get to these systems of ordering? How, um, how do we understand our world today? How is it structured? What are the ideologies and systems at work and what power do these systems of oppression and marginalization have on the lives that we lead? Um, so what is race and what is racism? Um, so <clears throat> to define race as the idea um, that human species is divided into distinct groups on the basis of inherited physical and behavioral differences. And racism is the prejudice and, and, and discrimination by individuals, communities, or institutions against people, groups, on the, mem on, on the basis of their membership of a particular racial or ethnic group, um, typically one that's minoritized or marginalized. That's the, um, uh, the Oxford Dictionary definition. And, um, and so racial capitalism is um, a term that was coined by Cedric Robinson um, around about 1983 when he wrote Black Marxism. And it's, it's encompassed by the idea that the development, organization and expansion of the capitalist society pursued essentially racial directions. And so did the social ideology. Um, that that community or, or, or those um, Western European civilizations organized around. Um, and so capitalism, understanding that it emerged from the feudal order of Western European civilizations, and, it's, and it grew within that culture, and which was already permeated by racism. And so racism isn't something that grew um, of race, the ideas of race, weren't something that grew out of slavery, colonization, and um, imperialist expansion, but was something that um, was already part of the fabric of European society before um, um, transatlantic slave trade. And so racialism and capitalism don't deviate from that old order, but rather evolved from it to produce the modern world system of racial capitalism um, that we know. And this system is dependent on this total extraction of, um, of um, via um, slavery through violence, through imperialism and genocide. And so on that basis then, our world that we understand of where we are today is built on the ideologies that developed in that period of time um, by um, European civilization. And the aim ultimately 
um, through capitalism, through racial capitalism, is to exaggerate regional, subcultural and dialectical differences into racial ones. And so understanding that then, then when you look at um, the, the history of Scotland and Scotland's involvement in transatlantic slavery and what we have of the legacies of that history around us, you, you, you then start to un have a better understanding of well, where the, the where where the, the money that created, whether the capital and the ideas that created Scotland, where did they come from? And so, for example, in Scotland, particularly in Glasgow, we know that all around Glasgow as a city grew dramatically during that period of involvement in transatlantic slavery, racialized chattel slavery and colonization, and that the profits and the wealth, colonial wealth, was brought back to the city and brought back to Scotland. And you can see that represented, for example, in the compensation records of 1834, which give us a snapshot in time and they're not necessarily representative of the entire period of British chattel slavery, but Scotland plays a disproportionately large role in the history of British and Irish slave ownership in the sense that 15% of the absentee um, slave owners um, were Scottish versus what was 10% of the Scottish population. Um, it, it, um, uh, Scottish population total of the British population, if you, sorry about it my mix up of words there. And so areas, um, and so when these um, mainly men returned back with their colonial wealth or decided to invest their wealth in Scotland, they bought what we know as landed estates um, all in and around Glasgow, which then comes to form what we know as Greater Glasgow. So um, these areas range from, um, 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 oh, sorry, apologies, um, I've lost my notes. Um, so th these areas range from Renfrewshire, Dumbartonshire, Lanarkshire, um, um, Ayrshire, um, um, and they invested heavily in industries which supported their plantation systems in the Americas. And so whether this was um, coal industries, um, man, um, clothing and dye industries, um, metal works, um, um, whether it was investments in our railways, the, um, the rail system that you know and see today, um, or investment in universities, investment in specific subjects such as, um, um, you know, anatomy, botany, medicine. Um, and so all aspects of society um, and industries um, um, had, had the potential to be influenced by the money that came from colonial wealth. And so when we then look at um, um, recent examples of how, um, you heard talks earlier on talking about um, social reproduction, privatization, and um, the, um, the inaccessibility of housing stock and the, and the uses of, um, destabilizing local communities through processes of gentrification um, in order to serve capitalist interests. Um, it's important to understand um, and to have an intersectional perspective on, on, um, on what, um, what systems are at play there. And so when we look at, for example, I was reading the um, Scottish Government report, um, House and Needs of Minority Ethnic Groups, which was published in January this year. And I noted um, a statement that was made um, in the introduction that states, there is also evidence that a sizable proportion of Scottish population hold prejudiced attitudes towards people from minority ethnic background. And that minority ethnic groups face, face appreciable levels of discrimination and harassment. And what I've heard from the talks today is that there is a very clear understanding of what the issues are. 
there have been evidence the via research studies and um, both um, quantitative and qualitative um, um, community groups have expressed um, their experiences their lived experiences and so we know what the issues are and this, the thing that caught my attention in that Scottish government um, um, review was the term appreciable so there is a sense that we have a good understanding, we appreciate what the issue is, we understand that discrimination and harassment is an issue. And so my question is, who's doing the appreciating and what is being done about the consequences of what is actually being appreciated? Um, because in reading a, lo a lot of um, these reports concerning housing, um, it seems that, for example, looking at the Scottish um, housing associations um, and their move to at home, at home with diversity to address some of the issues that a number of the reports that have been highlighted today have, have, um, um, have um, cited. Um, it, it seems that the main kind of aims to redress the issues aren't necessarily to address the discrimination and the harassment and the, uh, to address the inaccessibility to resources and um, it's more to address improvement of representation within the staffing um, structure um, and so um, yes and so uh, uh, recognizing that I've only got one minute left um, my kind of provocation today is really for us to have an intersectional approach to how we think of um, um, housing issues and understanding that um, you know, racism as a fundamental cause of the social determinants of health and understanding that um, housing, along with education, along with access to um, other um, social structures, along with um, our health, all our access to healthcare, all control um, the state of our lives and so we really can't divorce class from race really and we, we have to always have an intersectional um, perspective with how we, we look at these things but the history of how we got to where we are today, the history of our ideologies, the history of our activities and the histories of how we organize and order our systems of living and being um, are intrinsically linked to our experiences today. Um, and so um, I hope that keeps me in time. Um, but I, I just wanted to just highlight again that process that's been used in Glasgow, particularly with asylum seeker um, 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 communities of um, just in reference in um, the, the paper by Hill, Mayor and Peace in 2001, talking about this process of um, destabilizing and um, using privatized um, sources of housing provision um, and using that to have this co-constitutive relationship between um, 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 regeneration and the displacement of already displaced people randomly and removing any veneer of choice and removing the ability to make choices or limiting the types of choices that are available to us in effect creating um, um, destabilizing, marginalizing conditions in people's lives. These processes are not new and they are part of how we understand the world today and how the world today as we understand it has come to be. Um, I hope I've kept in time. Thank uh, you so much, that was fantastic. And I'd just like to also offer an apology. I'm afraid that I practiced reading your um, bio before we started and then I forgot to read your bio when we actually did start. So I'm gonna do it now. So um, after that fantastic talk, and I've got lots of questions actually, but Adi Basola Ramsey was born in Lagos in Nigeria and is based in Glasgow in Scotland. She, she studied biomedical sciences at the University of Glasgow and primarily works in public health. But she's also a visual artist, which I'm sure many of you already know, whose practice has developed over the last two decades. 
And so in tandem with painting and public health work over the last six years, she's been reading and researching around the history of chattel slavery, processes of racialization and racism, and black radical tradition in resistance to oppressive modes of being. And from 2016 to 2018, she co-led walking tours through Glasgow, highlighting historical links between the city's legacy, built heritage and transatlantic chateau slavery, colonization and empire. So um, I just wanted to add that in um, just to contextualize what you were saying. Apologies again for not doing that in advance, but thank you so much for such a rich and exciting um, presentation.